in, 11, in this 11-week process. I felt that I was in direct competition because that's the situation I was put in. And I was like, look, we, we are a team. We're not in competition yet. What did I do that made a competition? It, and when did you not make four other people in this competition cry by your attitude towards them? I don't think I did. OK. <laughs> I don't think I did. And I don't think we have to start personal attacks. Keep it Well, Barry, that's what this is about, like. Someone has to take responsibility. And you all know that. So why did you think it was acceptable to go along on day one without a PM when you had my written instructions to do that? I assume that I'm in charge. Not assume that I'm in charge. But I, you know, I lead the task in whatever way, I'm, whether I'm still PM, whether I'm doing, you know, filming something, whether I'm putting pictures together, whether I'm running a business. It doesn't matter. I'm always the guy responsible for no matter what happens. No matter what goes wrong, I'm responsible. Barry, Jim from Carry Out was very clear in saying that your presentation was poor and ill-prepared. That's what happened with both Phillips and Spar. And yet you insist on going on again. You know, somebody has to do it, you know, and if there's no but one But you else, didn't think Michelle was going to be able to do it? Well, she was doing it. Jordan the president, it was passed back to me, so I can't stand there and just... Oh, you weren't supposed to be there at all, and she just used you to pass things over no, to you? No, no, it wasn't like that. We so did. that's what you're at the saying to me. We're doing a They're page. They're saying you were there and she passed things to you, as if I, I'm not supposed to be doing anything. No, well, I did a page. Was it agreed between the two of you that she was going to make a dual presentation? Yeah. So why are you trying to tell me different? You just said she was making the but presentation. But it seems like that it's all been kind of left outside my door here. I have no problem doing anything, and I'll try my best but at But my point anything. is that you'd already fallen down on both Phillips and Spar presentations. Yeah. Do you accept that? I do. OK, so why didn't you say then, right, Michelle, you're the girl for this, and let her do it? And she was the girl, for, and she was presented. Barry, okay. she did about 30% of it. But that was her choice. She could have easily talked onto the next page, onto the next page. I Is wasn't that right? Like... You could have done this. You walked away from it then, did you? No, I didn't walk away from it at all. We agreed to do it 50-50. Barry would well, talk over if it was 50-50, why did I do 70% of it? because you would talk over me, you would interrupt me, you would switch from one page to another page to another page and then go, oh, you can say that bit, Michelle. And we, now at this point, we are in front of clients. Just totally took over. I knew exactly what I was going to say. I had the presentation done from early on in the day. I had did the presentation for this one. No, you had what you were going to say. And no, I, I did the presentation. It took half an hour. Every single what do you page mean, had the a bullet. Let her finish. Every Sorry. single page had a bullet point after it, so you couldn't go wrong. So even if it was informal, it was structured. So what happened? He jumped in on some of them. He didn't go through them properly. He literally went like, press the button. That's the third slide. Now I'm going back to the second slide. Now, oh Michelle, you can go now. Like it was clearly laid out. It was an easy presentation to make. It was in bullet points. Like it was just one dirty wagon bill. It was all over the place. Mm. And I don't understand how both of you didn't know that. You should have known it too, and you should have said it to him, and not agree to a 50-50 split, you do one and I do the other. It doesn't work. To be a good leader, Barry, the first thing you have to learn is leaders have to delegate. Otherwise, you're not a leader. You just wanted a herd. How do you rate Michelle? I think she's a very strong candidate. I do. She's very strong. Very different to me, but very strong. Do you have a thing about women? Absolutely Working not. with them? Absolutely Working not. Working for them? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. I get that impression. Well, I don't really mean to. You know, said she was a off. dictator in the Cadbury's one, in Terrell's Pass. I mean, she wasn't giving people a choice of what they were going to do, and I kind of had to drag her kicking and screaming to get my ideas onto that task, like the whole stage and the cars and so the So you were kicking and screaming on a previous it wasn't, task? Like, I mean, this is brand new. That was never said on the task. You, know, you actually said Michelle was quite a good PM, but I was a different management style because I made you focus, and I did make you focus, and someone had to, but I thought you performed really well on that task, and you said you perform, thought I performed very well, but now we're in the boardroom, I, I was awful. Listen, I, that's not what I said. <laughs> I never said you were awful. Oh, you performed well. You had you... to drag me kicking and screaming no, to do no. what? That's what you just said. Yes, and I did, to get my ideas passed. No, she... you didn't. OK, you didn't want the stage, you didn't want yes, the band. Yes, I did. What? Okay. You didn't want the stage, you didn't want the bands, you didn't want the cars. I don't want those cars in the I'm field. not getting into this because this is just like... Bill, you can ask any other candidate. Barry, there's something wrong. It doesn't matter about it, other people. There's two of us here. There is. Saying, I don't want to slate somebody, Bill. I want to get the job That's on, interesting. Would you not think he's already slated you? Um, yes, 100%. And really incorrectly so. There's, but there's actually things you can slate me on in this task rather than making things up I from other tasks. I am absolutely not making anything up. Okay. And I'll take a, a polygraph on it. So who is responsible for the failure of this task? Who do you think it is? Probably me, Bill. I always have to put myself out to be, um, I suppose, chopped. If you excuse the phrase, if things go again. bad. I'm always on the chopping block. 
Like, I mean, that's why when you're in business, that you do, you take risks and you work hard and you try and get results. And if it doesn't work, you have to pay well, the consequences. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. You're not a totally different perspective to what I said for you. I said, who do you think is responsible for the failure in this task? And you said, it's me because I put myself out there, I'm this and that and the other. That's not what it was about. You don't think you're responsible for the failure of this task. You're I... saying that because you put yourself out, you should be responsible. Well, that's uh, not the same thing. We failed on the presentation and just from the comments from the guys in the Barry group, I'll, I'll be responsible. So are you saying Michelle had no input whatsoever then? She might as well have stayed in bed that day. No. I mean, of course Michelle had input, but I mean, we're a team. What do you think? Who do you think was responsible for the failure of the task? I don't want to go anywhere, so I'm going to put, say it's Barry. So why shouldn't I for you? I think that I've now proven to you that I can sell, I'm creative. Well, you've proved to me that you don't speak up when you should. I think I did prove to you that I do speak up when I should on this task. It probably means nothing, but it was a massive thing for me to even change the tablecloths. I felt disrespected on this task, I felt like my ideas were no good, and I'm being completely lied about, and I still want to be here, and I still think that I would be able to fit into any organisation I was put into once there wasn't somebody who completely dismisses everything you say. Why shouldn't I fire you, Barry? Bill, I do work hard. And you know I do. And, like, I mean, I am a greyhound. And I do knock down walls. Like, I do. That's what I do. I mean, there's nobody who'll work harder. I'm first up in the morning and I'm last to bed. Every single day. I like building a rapport with people. I like continued business. I like a legacy of a business. A business that's going to be there after I'm gone. And that's what I'd hope to bring to Glen Cullen. I'm sure at some point you're going to say, do you know what, I'm going to hang the shoes up. I don't want to be doing this anymore. And I'd love to think that, you know, down the line, you'd, you'd entrust me with that. Like, I've met the head guy from um, your firm, and he's a really down-to-earth guy. And that's the type of people I want to work with. Those type of people, the people like mine, people like Jackie. But not people like Michelle. Michelle has strengths. Sometimes, though, I just felt there was no talking to the, to the lady, you know? And, it, and sometimes just people are like that. Michelle, I felt you didn't answer Jackie's question. Sorry. Why did you let him overshadow you? I don't... I don't know. I tried not to. I tried not to let him overshadow me. Like, I stood up for myself on various occasions during the task, and I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a fairly strong character, like. Sure it is. But you're going to meet many strong characters in the I've, business. I've met 15 strong characters in this business and I've been able to work with every single one of them and I actually 100% worked with Barry. It was just when we got in the car that things went wrong. What happened in the car? We got in the car and Barry was very annoyed with me because um, of the tablecloth thing and that. Um, I had made him look like an idiot and he told me that I am performing for the cameras and that there's 15 other people in the house that think I'm performing for the cameras and I said to Barry that I thought he had been aggressive towards me and he was very offended by that. But when I said that, he said that I had issues and I needed to... I had issues. There was no scene. It was a conversation we had. You played the victim very well, like, and it's great. But that was the case, like. There was there absolutely go. no scene. Genuinely. And I've worked with 15 other people in the house as well. Would That's you, all Would was. you understand if people described you as a control freak? Yeah, I think that'd be a bit harsh. I like getting results. No, 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 you're moving away from what I just okay, said. OK, we'll control a task. Control like... freak, you want to control everything. Do you think that's I don't a like... fair description of I... your modus operandi? I don't like flaffing about. I like going out and getting the job done. Not and the that's not thing. That's you're not controlling. The question. It's, it's, it's of course not it's the... controlling. You're telling them what to do and get on with it. Yeah, well then... That's controlling if that's the... Yeah, well then... It... Yeah. If that's and it what... doesn't matter what their opinions are, get on with it. Barry, let me say something to you. Over the weeks gone out, I've heard from Jackie and Brian in particular that you refer to your female colleagues as babes, angel faces and precious. Do you think that's a fair way to address your colleagues and your equals? They're my friends as well. I mean, it's a habit of me. Like, I mean, when you work with, with um, lots of lovely people women as I've done um, it's not condescending in any way it's so just what, what do you think I woman, don't know what maybe do you think people, a woman thinks if you say she's a babe it was a pet name I had for somebody and it just reminds me of somebody and but you've used it babes. all the time I know I don't even know I'm doing it Barry that's not acceptable in a corporate environment okay and it's very disrespectful 
Michelle, you've had some very good wins here. But what I'm looking at now is someone who's letting it all slip through our fingers. You just let them away with all this stuff. I didn't walk away once on this task. I got completely stuck into this task, regardless of what was going on outside it. Like, there was many an occasion, you know, unnecessary aggression or being called babes or having your ideas just forgotten about any of those things. I could have gone, do you know what? I've had enough. I've been here for 11 weeks. I'm tired and I want to go home. And there was not once did I do that. I got absolutely 100% stuck in. Do you think I'd ever intentionally disrespect you? Because I certainly wouldn't. Like, I mean, I have, I have a wife, I have children. Do you ever think I'd disrespect them? You think a babe is a nice word? I think babes is... You just... know what the definition of a babe is? No, Bill. Go look it up and you'll never say it again. And that's what upsets me. Because your energy is infectious, but only when you're in control and focused. Michelle, you come from a sales background and you've impressed me in areas that you shouldn't be good on in these tasks. Tasks that you've had no experience of before now. And Barry, you have so much going for you that it's very hard to make a decision here. You have a special talent. I call it the likability factor. You have that. You have it naturally. And you're an entrepreneur. And your entrepreneur style is trying to do it all yourself. And I was that man 40 years ago, till I found out that two heads are better than one. And even more than that, I've learned, and very quickly, that a good team can achieve 10 times more than a one-man band. So Barry, you're fired. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Best of luck. It's been emotional. Michelle, I've given you all the advice I can. I'm not going to waste any more. You're still not taking it all in. You're very lucky to be here. And that's all I'm going to say. From here on out, it's up to you. Off you go. Thank you. I'm kind of disappointed that Michelle is soft, as she seems to be, and that Barry just doesn't see the faults that he obviously has. He's a great guy, very yeah. likeable, entrepreneur, he's done yeah. everything, thinks he, he knows everything and thinks he has to do everything, and he is difficult to manage. But, quite frankly, uh, this teary-eyed diva... It doesn't work for me. Well, I'm hoping for her sake that it's tears of temper and not tears of... Yeah, we tears you know, last week as well. There's no tears place that anywhere. No, and she needs her up again now and find a second win fast. And she needs to get the fire back in her belly yeah. and get out there fighting because it's the only way. Well, as we always say, we will see. I know I say babes, but it's not in a condescending way. I say it because it's just a habit of like, oh, thanks, babes, because it's... And that's how it, it is, and it's been completely taken out of context now. I think Barry just clicks with certain people, and he doesn't click with any. I think that's just he wears his heart and sleeve. That could be a downfall. Well, you can be truthful, but you well, can I mean, be truthful could be downfall, and not aggressive. You know. The same. Thing. She played it beautifully. She really did. She won't win the competition. There's there's much much nicer people there. You ask 16 people who's in the house who is ruthless. They'll have one name for you. It won't be me. With four remaining, the search for Bill Cullen's apprentice continues. Next week on The Apprentice. Give me three adjectives that describe you. Ambitious, hardworking. Motivational. Do you mean motivated? Mm. It's a hard one. It's OK. You can take, take a breath, take a drink of water. And you think you're a 100,000 euro candidate? You're fired. <laughs>